Laura Vitale and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen I want to show you how to make millionaire shortbread which is so phenomenal just you wait it's basically like a layered cookie really it's got a shortbread crust it's got a thick delicious caramel layer and then a chocolate topping that I like to sprinkle with some sea salt because I just love the addition of a little bit of salt to just sort of balance all of the sweetness going on it is the stuff of dreams and I'm thrilled to share it with you. Let's start with a shortbread crust because it's super easy to make and that's the first thing you gotta work on anyway. So, all you need for this is some flour with a little bit of salt, you need some sugar and I've got some butter here. It's mostly melted because I was softening this on top of my stove as I was preheating the oven but it is fine. It just means that it's gonna work a little bit easier. And you need a little bit of vanilla bean paste or vanilla extract. Now I've got my oven preheating to 350. I've got here, what I have here is a rectangular, um, this is like a, I don't even want to call it a springform pan because it's not, but it's just a rectangular like tart pan with a removable bottom. This is a bit of an odd size. Um, I like to make it this way because it just looks pretty, makes little triangles, but you can do the same recipe in an eight by eight square pan lined overlined with parchment paper so that you can kind of lift them out and it works perfect every single time. I just make it in this one because it's prettier. That's pretty much it. So let's get started. I'm going to make it in a bowl with just a whisk and a spatula and it's going to be awesome. I'm going to add the butter, really buttery obviously, and the sugar. I just want to whisk these together for a minute just to combine. If your butter isn't as melted like mine is, it shouldn't be melted, it should be sort of like softened at room temperature, then you would need to cream this a little bit easier, a little bit better, but it takes a minute if it's already melted anyway. And then I'm going to add a little bit of vanilla bean paste, about, I would say, a quarter teaspoon if you are using extract, I would use closer to one teaspoon, but vanilla bean paste is literally all vanilla beans, so it's very, very strong. Now I'm going to add the dry ingredients, switch to a spatula and just combine. That's it. Add all that in there and it looks right now like there's not enough to cover but trust you me, there is. You just need to work just with a little bit of patience and as you press this down, you kind of make a thin layer on the bottom because it's a really rich cookie and it does puff up a little bit as it bakes but it turns out perfect. I'm telling you, I made this a few days ago, I made a batch because I was going to give some of it away to a friend and I was just taking sneak, not, not sneak peek photos, but I like to take some photos to share them on my Instagram stories, which you don't follow me, you definitely should. And I had overwhelming amount of people ask me for the recipe, so I figured, I, I knew I was going to share it anyway because I don't do that to you when I share something on Instagram, chances are I'm going to share it with you anyway because I know I'll get questions, but man, people were going insane, they were so excited. You see how it spreads like really perfect? Just take your time. I mean, it's not like you're in a rush or anything. That's the beauty of weekend baking, or baking in general anyway. I don't like to bake in a hurry. Just take your time and press it in the bottom and the sides of your pan. That looks perfect. You're gonna take a fork and you're just gonna pierce all over, bottom, sides, everywhere. So I'll go ahead and do that, and then once we're done, um, we are gonna pop. We <laughs> I'm gonna pop this into an oven, 350, 15 to 20 minutes, or until golden brown. And I will show you what it looks like when it's there. But in the meantime, we're gonna work on making that delicious sticky caramel that's unbelievably incredible, and you're gonna absolutely love this. I'm gonna pop this in, get my ingredients out for the caramel, and then we'll get started. All right, so to make the caramel filling, what you need is some sweetened condensed milk, some butter, and a little bit of brown sugar. There's a lot of sweetness going on in here, but keep in mind, it is an occasional treat that is so worth it, it's amazing. But to get this part right, there's a few things you gotta keep in mind. I have made the mistake, I've made these mistakes many, many times, and I wanna keep you from making them too so that you don't get as frustrated as I have gotten in the past. You want to use a pan that's a heavy bottom, thick pan. This is not the place for a really thin, pretty pot. You need something heavy, you need something thick, and preferably non-stick. Also, do not use too much heat. So your flame 
cannot go on the sides of the pot. If you're putting your small pot on a big burner, your flames are going to go around the pot and it's going to burn the sides. And once any of it burns, there's no going back. So you're going to put this on a small burner and you're going to bring it to a boil and then you're going to cook it on low heat on the small burner until it becomes really thick and delicious looking. And I will show you what it looks like when it gets there. But please be patient. Don't be tempted to turn the heat up because it will just burn. It could take up to 20 minutes. So you just got to babysit it, give it some love, give it a little bit of TLC, and it will come out perfect in the end, I promise. All right, it's been about 15 minutes and you can completely see the difference in texture. You can see the color is a lovely, like light caramel colored, that is perfect. My crust is ready, that just came out of the oven and it really works best if you pour this in your crust while the crust and the filling is still warm because as the filling cools even just a little tiny bit, see there's no burn bits or anything and that's what you wanna look for because if anything sticks or anything burns, you're gonna have to start over. Um, as the filling cools, which even five minutes makes a big difference because it starts to set and you don't want that because that makes it extremely difficult to, you know, even it out and pour it in here. You see how easy that is? It works really, really nicely when it's nice and hot. Now you're going to leave this aside to cool, I would say for a good couple of hours. You need this to be what I do is I let it cool for about an hour and a half at room temperature, then I pop it into the fridge for about a half an hour just to make sure it's really cooled. That way we can top it with our final layer of chocolate and it is just perfection every single time. So do that because if this doesn't set well then and it's still warm, then the chocolate's gonna melt into it and it's a disaster. So just follow my lead. Let it cool, an hour and a half, into the fridge for half an hour and it'll be perfect. My caramel base has set perfectly you hear the baby <laughs> Mia's back there playing and finding this whole thing very amusing you hear <gasps> we're gonna get going on making the chocolate layer for the very top and all you need is some good quality semi-sweet chocolate where you can use milk chocolate and some butter don't use chocolate chips for this it does not work well ask me how I know and it doesn't melt as well as you need it to melt so just use a really good bar of semi-sweet or milk chocolate, break it up into pieces, a little bit of softened butter. I'm gonna pop this into the microwave or you could do it over a double boiler until it is completely melted. Keep an eye on it because you don't want the chocolate to burn. All right, so I've, I have just made sure to smear that chocolate in one beautiful layer over top of the caramel. And then what I do is I just sprinkle a little bit of really good quality sea salt over the top just to balance all of that sweetness. And once this sets, we're gonna cut and serve. My chocolate is set. Look at this. Oh, yes. That is gorgeous. I cannot wait to dig into this. Now, I like to cut like triangles. I just think it looks pretty, but don't make them too big because keep in mind, this is incredibly rich and delicious. But let me just tell you this. This could win awards. It's so good. And I kid you not when I tell you that if whoever I present this to, whoever I give this to, they say, that's the best thing I've ever eaten because there's just something about the there's just something about the combo of everything and that salt making it all come to life, which really is key here because without it, I just feel like it's too one-dimensional. But with it, it wakes everything else up. I just cut myself a perfect little triangle. Mmm. Perfection. You cannot imagine how good this is. And how simple. Making it perfect if you want to do like a holiday gift, gift giving, or if you want to bring something sweet to a party, this is it. It's a great departure from like cookies or brownies. It's just amazing. Laura in the kitchen.com has a recipe ready for you. I hope you enjoy spending time with me. Please make the shortbread, and I guarantee you, you will love it as much as we do. And I'll see you next time. Bye.